Hello and welcome to the Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber of Commerce's fourth iteration in a series we've called Coffee with the Candidates. This year, we had the pleasure of welcoming to the Chamber Boardroom the candidates for the 17th Judicial District for Court of Common Pleas, Honorable Lori Hackenberg and Brian Kerstetter, Esquire. Thanks to the Chamber's Chair Circle sponsors, who by their sponsorship ensure the Chamber's focus on your strategic imperatives, including access to local officials. A few housekeeping items. While we've worked to splice together this video in such a way as to line up candidates' answers side by side, no edits have been made to any candidates' responses. Special thanks to Digital Promotions team at Remax Bridges, especially Dave Hilliard, who provided technical assistance and equipment to this project. Thank you, Remax Bridges. Without further ado, Chamber President and CEO, Bob Garrett. Our Chamber's current strategic plan is built around four urgent questions. These questions come from the responses of nearly 700 members representing 53,000 employees, nearly all of whom live right here in the greater Susquehanna Valley, to a survey that was conducted during the summer of 2020. In this plan, urgent question number three is, how can I engage with my public officials on local economic uncertainty, changes in regulations, and harmful government policies. To promote this engagement, with me today are the Honorable Lori Hackenberg and Brian Kurtzstetter, who are the candidates for judge to the Court of Common Pleas in the 17th District of Pennsylvania. Keeping with a long chamber tradition, each candidate has received the discussion starters, questions if you prefer, ahead of time. The reason for this is simple. Our aim is creating light, not smoke, for our many members registered to vote in Union and Snyder counties who are tuning into this recording as they make critically important decisions related to who they will vote for next Tuesday, November 2nd. Now, just a word about these questions. Judicial candidates agree to a set of ethics that form fairly tight rails when it comes to questions that they may answer while on the campaign trail. At no time may these candidates stray beyond these rails to create even the appearance of bias, preconception, or prejudice. As the statue Themis, who you may better know as Lady Eustica, or the Scales of Justice, or Blind Justice, Holding her balance in one hand and her sword in the other reminds us we all deserve fairness. I will do my level best to stay well within these ethical rails throughout this conversation. So, let us begin. Tell me about yourself, Lori. Well, I'd like to start off by saying good morning to everyone who is uh, tuning into this audio and video. Um, and I want to thank you to Bob Garrett, to the Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber of Commerce for all the work that you do to promote small businesses in our area um, and the work of your members and you in keeping our community, our valley, prosperous and vital. Um, so thank you for having me here today. Uh, my name is Lori Hackenberg. And for the past nine years, I have served as a magisterial district judge here in Snyder County. I am now running for judge of Court of Common Pleas in the 17th Judicial District, which is comprised of both Union and Snyder County. Uh, I am the only Republican candidate for this role uh, on the ballot, and I am proud that the Republican voters have elected me and chose me to be the Republican candidate in the general election. I am um, married. I have my husband, Jeremy. Of, um, we've been married 22 years. We have two daughters. And he is a program and clinical director of Beacon Light, which is a program located in McClure. Uh, we have two wonderful daughters. Gabriella is a student at Susquehanna University. Audrey is a student at Midwest High School. Uh, my husband and I are involved in many local community activities and organizations. Um, our family attends church at Harvest Union County. 
As a lifelong area resident, I share the conservative values of the people of Snyder and Union County. Uh, it is, you know, growing up in the Susquehanna Valley, uh, my parents taught me the values of being kind to others and working very hard and caring about our community and above all, trusting God in all things. And I strive every day to bring those values with me uh, on the bench and in everything I do in my life. So I um, am happy to be here today. I have um, been a magisterial district judge, as I mentioned, for nine years. Uh, upon graduation from Widener University School of Law, I opened up, um, well, before that, I actually started working for Judge William Harvey Wiest, and there I was a law clerk where I research legal matters and prepare legal documents and decisions for the common pleas judge. So I was in charge of drafting those documents. And then I opened up my private practice in New Berlin, where I have practiced all the different areas of civil and criminal practice that you would want to see a judge of the Court of Common Pleas practice. Uh, in 2011, I was elected as magisterial district judge, re-elected in 2017, and um, have been able to serve in that capacity uh, for the people of Snyder County and Union County when we are on call. Um, I also was asked to be part of the treatment court team and a judicial team member by Judge Hudock. So I have all of that experience as well. Well, thank you, uh, Lori, and, and thank, you. thank you for defining for us. Uh, we hear this term, Judicial District 17, but we think of Union and Snyder, so thank you for clarifying that. And, and those rock-solid uh, uh, rock values that you mentioned that you were brought up with, uh, that could be a great mission statement for the uh, Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber of Commerce. So thank you for that response. You're welcome. Brian, we'll always start with the same question. Tell me about yourself. Well, first of all, good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. My name is Brian Kerstetter. I'm a resident of Lewisburg. I've been a lifelong resident of Lewisburg. Uh, my father was a police officer in Lewisburg for 28 years and uh, retired from the police chief, retired as the police chief uh, of the Lewisburg Police Department back in 1999, which is actually when I began uh, practicing law. Uh, when I returned from law school in 1999, I hung out my own shingle. Uh, I've been practicing law there uh, for the past 22 years. I've also held positions as a first assistant public defender in Snyder County. Uh, I've been the off and on first assistant district attorney in Snyder County uh, for 17 of my 22 years. Uh, that is where I really got my trial experience. Uh, in that 17 year time frame, I've conducted over 100 uh, criminal uh, and civil jury trials. Uh, obviously the district attorney's office doesn't have anything to do with the civil trials. That's been part of my private practice. Uh, the vast majority of my jury trials have been uh, criminal cases. Um, I've been a small business owner for the, for the 22 years uh, that I've had my own business. Um, I mentioned my father. Uh, while he was a police officer, he also had a floor sanding and refinishing business. Uh, and I've worked in that business since I was 10 years old. Uh, as I got a little bit um, older, uh, while he was doing the police officer and the police chief thing, I was given some more uh, responsibility uh, in that regard with respect to that business. Uh, almost to the point of, of running it. Uh, when I was old enough, uh, I still maintain a set of equipment today. I still do some of that work for friends uh, and family members. So I know what the small business owners out there uh, are going through. Um, I understand being uh, fiscally conservative. Uh, I would certainly bring those ideas uh, to the bench with me. Um, I've represented over my 22 years numerous townships, municipal authorities, uh, zoning hearing boards, and counsel to the Buffalo Valley Regional Police Commission. Um, I've been the attorney for the domestic relations offices in both Union and Snyder County uh, for the last 20 years. I was recently, I recently received an award um, for that. That's a position where I spend two days in court uh, each and every month. Um, I represent numerous businesses throughout Pennsylvania. I'm counsel to the Pennsylvania Towing Association, uh, guardian ad litem in custody cases. I've taught classes in the paralegal program at the McCann School of Business. So that's, that's just a little bit about me. Well, thank you, Brian. That, uh, 
I think you're the first person I've ever met who sands floors for fun and relaxation. <laughs> but that's uh, interesting. I don't know I, if it's fun and relaxation. Yeah, but <laughs> the uh, that uh, as you painted that picture, I, I couldn't help but to think of the country lawyer. You know, you went off to law school, came back, uh, hang your hung your. Uh, uh, your plate and uh, off you went, uh, pass the baton from your father to yourself. That's a, a wonderful story. Welcome. Second question is, we frequently hear the term judicial temperament when it comes to races such as yours. Could you please explain and possibly give an example or two of what that term means to you? Sure. Um, you know, I believe that my life experiences have shaped me to be the person uh, that I am today. And I think judicial temperament cannot be taught. It's an innate characteristic within an individual. Uh, as a judge for the past nine years, I have strived to show dignity and respect to the people who appear in front of me. Uh, I have provided uh, you know, the opportunity to them to have their case heard. And I think that's really important with judicial temperament. Uh, I am not a judge who legislates from the bench. I follow the law as written. Uh, I'm committed to preserving our constitutional rights and our liberties. And uh, out of all of that, uh, I think judicial temperament is such a vital, important feature. Um, and, and I really do think a judicial role, a judge's role, is to lead by example. Uh, I am there to serve my constituents, not the other way around. And the voters know uh, that with my exemplary judicial record, I have that judicial temperament and uh, have the, they don't have to guess what kind of judge I am. They know the judge um, that I already am serving on both the district court and um, in the Court of Common Pleas. That's a fairly unique position to be in, to be running as a judge and already a judge. And yes. uh, so uh, sort of an open book, if you will, and appreciate uh, your uh, references to dignity and respect. It sort of leads us to the next question. You've been on the campaign trail this uh, entire year, maybe beyond that, uh, and uh, it's been an odd year uh, <laughs> that we're, uh, we're wrapping up here. Um, any highlights from the campaign trail? Oh yeah, absolutely. The biggest highlight is meeting the people. Um, we've been out on the campaign trail for over nine months now, and it has been such a blessing to meet the good and hardworking people of Snyder and Union County. Uh, I've been able to reconnect with old friends and supporters uh, across the district as well. And you know, the common theme that I hear from them is they want a judge who has integrity, who is fair, and who has the judicial experience. And, uh, and I've been able to embrace and, 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 and hold all of those characteristics. So I'm very happy to uh, be supporting and um, running for this position where they know um, I am a judge with those qualifications. We frequently hear the term judicial temperament when it comes to races such as yours. Could you please explain and possibly give an example of, or, or two of what this term might mean to you? Yes, um, I've always thought that it was unfair for me as an individual and a candidate to talk about my own temperament. Um, I think that's uh, like integrity that has to be judged by others. So I, I think if folks want to know about my, my temperament, uh, they need to ask the people that I work with uh, on a daily basis, other lawyers, uh, courtroom personnel, uh, et cetera. If you talk to those individuals, I believe that those individuals that I'll t will tell you that I have a, judi a good judicial temperament um, based on my performance uh, in the courtroom over the last uh, 22 years. Uh, I think having a good judicial temperament means having the ability to put aside any preconceived ideas that you have when you're sitting up on the bench and decide cases based only on the facts that are presented uh, in court and not based upon any preconceived notions life experiences that you've brought with you uh, into the courtroom. That is uh, essential uh, to the litigants to demonstrate uh, to them that justice uh, remains blind, uh, that it remains equally balanced uh, for all the parties uh, that are involved. Um, but again, it's the ability to set aside any, any life experience or preconceived notions that you may have and, and, and judge a case simply based on, on the facts that are presented uh, inside of the courtroom. 
Um, in speaking with folks that I work with on a daily basis, I'd point out that I have the endorsement of over 28, it's 28, uh, retired and practicing attorneys uh, in Union and Snyder County, and that's the vast majority of the retired and practicing attorneys in both of these counties. And they've put their good names um, in behind mine in this race, uh, I believe because they know what my temperament uh, consists of and my ability to uh, set aside any preconceived ideas that I may have uh, in the courtroom. So uh, that's what judicial temperament uh, means to me. I, I, again, I think it's best judged by others, uh, but that said, I, I, I think that I do have the ability um, to, to judge cases uh, fairly, uh, impartially, uh, again, based on uh, only that which comes into the courtroom. I appreciate that uh, definition. The, uh, I, think, I think we really struggle uh, with uh, what judicial temperament means. Does it mean a person walks around in black robes all the time? I, I doubt it. Uh, but that, uh, that's a good working definition, and we greatly appreciate that. Well, it's been an odd year, uh, Brian, and you've been actively on the campaign trail throughout this entire odd year, uh, and just wondering any highlights uh, that you could uh, share with uh, members of the chamber. Yeah, we've been at this since January, uh, so uh, over 10 months at this point. So there certainly have been uh, some highlights on the, the campaign trail. I've mentioned uh, the endorsement of the attorneys. Uh, that I've had and, and being the vast majority of the practicing and retired attorneys uh, in both uh, counties. That's been uh, an extreme honor of mine. Um, it's been an honor to have received the endorsement of the Pennsylvania State Troopers Association. Uh, that's a 9,000 member uh, organization who saw fit to endorse uh, my candidacy, probably because of the work that I've done over the last 17 years uh, as a district attorney. <laughs> Um, I was honored to have received the endorsement of the Gun Owners of America because of the work that I've done uh, regarding the Second Amendment sanctuary ordinances in, in two of the townships that I represent uh, in Union County, Gregg Township and, and Limestone Township. Um, I've, I've said that I don't want to take the credit away from the supervisors who, who voted on those ordinances and actually made those things uh, happen. I was only there uh, to provide guidance uh, to them concerning the difference between differences between uh, ordinances, resolutions, uh, things of that sort. But because of my work uh, in those particular uh, arenas, I was recognized by the, by the Gun Owners of America and received uh, their endorsement. You know, another highlight has just been simply uh, meeting the members of the community. Uh, as I said before, uh, I was born and raised in Union County. Um, so I'm more familiar with the folks uh, who live in that county, but just getting out um, into the more rural areas of Union County uh, and speaking with the individuals uh, from those rural areas has really been a highlight. Um, I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy talking with them about their concerns, uh, what it is they want out of a judicial candidate. And that applies not only to Union County, uh, but to Snyder County as well. Uh, my private office has always been in Union County, and I've done the vast majority of my courtroom work through the district attorney's office in Snyder County. So I have the same sort of interaction with, with the folks in Snyder County that I had uh, in Union County. And again, just being able to hear their concerns, uh, hear what it is they expect from a, from a common pleas judge uh, has been a huge highlight of mine. Well, appreciate uh, the reference to uh, the rural nature of the greater Susquehanna Valley, in your case, Union and Snyder counties, uh, uh, we think it's pretty unique and worth preserving, uh, and uh, it has its own set of uh, challenges uh, in a rural area. Yeah. Yeah. You know, out of fairness, I almost have to ask, uh, I ask you about highlights, any lowlights? Certainly, um, yeah, I mean, in, political races are, are, they are what they are. Um, sometimes they end up being a little bit testy, I think is the word uh, that has been used. That's certainly a, a low light as far as I'm concerned when it comes to uh, judicial campaigns. Um, you know, the, the general nastiness that comes about when people are running uh, for political office and, and candidates put themselves out there to be scrutinized uh, by members of the general public. So it's not like we can say that we didn't ask for it. Um, when we decided to get involved in these races, but to think for a moment uh, that it's fun uh, on either side 
um, is just uh, absurd. Um, politics is a dirty business, as they've said. Uh, we, we see the, that in virtually all races anymore. It's unfortunate that it's become you know, Democrats versus Republicans and, and Republicans versus Democrats and not always uh, what's best for the people uh, as a whole. And that's the kind of candidate that I want to be. I want to be that candidate who is, who is more for the people uh, than for any politicians or, or anything of that sort. Uh, you can't talk about lowlights without mentioning COVID. Um, I, I, nobody has really had the experience of having to run uh, in the history of elections during a time when, when, when this pandemic has been so prevalent. Um, and, and it really caused problems for campaigning uh, particularly in the primary because, you know, none of us were really sure how people would feel about us showing up at their door and asking for their votes. Um, when I would go around to municipal meetings and ask uh, individuals how they would feel about it, the response was very, very, very mixed. You know, on the one hand, you had folks that say, if you show up at my door, you have my vote. And on the other hand, you have those folks that say, you know, Brian, if you show up at my door and you end up infecting my 90-year-old mother, you know, not only will you not get my vote, I will inflict bodily harm on you. Uh, <laughs> you know, that makes it difficult to reconcile those things. So those are, those are certainly lowlights. Um, you know, we've had probably over 100 signs uh, taken mm -hmm. uh, in both Union and Snyder County as a result. Of, so people are passionate uh, about their, their candidates. They're not to be faulted um, for being passionate, but th those are just a few of the lowlights uh, that I've experienced out on the campaign trail over the last you know, 10 months. Yeah, I was, uh, my mind was wandering thinking about that, uh, you know, in an area like Union and Snyder County where people expect to see their candidates. How do you do that when, uh, when maybe half the folks are not really interested in seeing you? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And, of yeah. course, I couldn't uh, help but to think about uh, uh, the, in the arena, you know, the, the glory belongs to the man or the woman in the arena, uh, and uh, whose face is bloodied, and uh, up, you know the rest of the uh, how that goes. But it's a uh, uh, it certainly is a contact sport. We'll Indeed. call it that. Indeed. The uh, uh, you know out of fairness, I guess any question asking about highlights, you have to ask the other side. Any yeah. low lights? What's it been like uh, campaigning in the age of COVID? Yes, well, everybody knows that running um, for office is tough business. Um, and I can take the hits for, you know, personal attacks and, um, and, and the hard hitting issues that come before me, although they are unfounded and, um, and just simply unnecessary. And that's especially true in a judicial race. We have to, as you mentioned before, we have a code of judicial conduct that we have to follow um, as judicial candidates and, and as a judge myself. In addition to that, as attorneys, we have to follow the professional rules of professional conduct um, and a code of civility. And I have handled my campaign in adherence to all of them. Uh, I have never attacked my opponent, um, and I have really run my campaign worthy of the integrity that this high office of Court of Common Pleas demands and that the voters expect. The, um, you know, uh, here in chamber world, if you will, we, we oftentimes talk about uh, we occupy the sane center. You know, we're right down the middle on a lot of uh, issues and we're trying to bring people together and different viewpoints together. And, and I'm sure when you're on the campaign trail, you really get that opportunity to hear a lot of different viewpoints and see where the where is the uh, center. I, I didn't know about the code of civility. That's uh, we'll have to learn more about that. Uh, <laughs> something that we'll uh, maybe try to adopt more here at the chamber. I always think about when you talk, uh, talk about campaigns. Uh, I think about the you know the man in the arena or man or woman in the arena that the uh, face is bloodied, but to them belongs the glory and. And I'm sure this, uh, uh, this is a wonderful experience for you. I think anyone who's ever campaigned for any office uh, thinks everybody should try it once. <laughs> Anyhow, so, so um, let me it's not uh, move. for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah, amen and amen. Uh, next question is uh, what changes, modernizations, new approaches can, might we look 
to, to you to bring to the courts of Snyder and Union counties? Yeah, it kind of dovetails uh, nicely into what I said before uh, about COVID. I don't want to ever suggest that the pandemic has been a blessing to anyone. It certainly has not. So please don't take me the wrong way uh, when I say that COVID has been anything other than a blessing in the sense that it has caused courts to modernize a little bit in Union and Snyder County. Um, it's caused the courts in both Union and Snyder counties to upgrade the technology uh, in their courtrooms. And that is certainly not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. Um, both Union and Snyder County courts have had to uh, figure out ways to get people to be able to testify uh, without having to come into court uh, to give uh, attorneys and, and parties who don't have attorneys the ability to be able to file documents um, with the court without having to come in uh, to the courthouse. So when I was thinking about running for office uh, last year, once I found out that Judge Hudock uh, was going to be retiring, I, I really thought about you know, technology in the courtrooms. Um, I, I practice bankruptcy law as well, and that is, a, that is federal law. So I spend uh, quite a bit of time in federal courtrooms. And the technology in, in federal courtrooms is far superior uh, to that in, in our courts of common pleas in these, uh, in both Union and Snyder County. And, you know, I dare say that the federal courts uh, seem to work just a bit more efficiently because of that technology. But because of COVID, we were forced into having to um, move the upgrades of our courtrooms um, forward. So now, you know, we have witnesses who can appear uh, via Zoom um, we have a certain amount of, of, of relaxation of the rules concerning document filing uh, with our prothonotary and clerk of courts. I would certainly like to continue with that um, to the point where we maybe even get to an e-filing type of system, which has been in effect in the federal system uh, for well over 20 years. I think that's been in effect actually since I started. Um, it works in the federal system, so I don't see why it couldn't work um, in the uh, state system, in the courts of common pleas. Um, you know, we brought big screen TVs uh, into the courtroom. We do a, a lot now um, via, via closed circuit television, you, you know, Skype, uh, Zoom, uh, FaceTime, those sorts of mediums um, have all been used. And, and I think that technology and the modernization of the courtrooms is, is important. And I would certainly uh, intend to carry on with those ideas. Well, we uh, appreciate and applaud uh, your embracing of technology, uh, which actually gets to our urgent question number four in our strategic plan, which is uh, related to technology uh, and uh, access to broadband and high-speed internet, which will become even more important when that is connected to the judicial system. The, let me move along and ask, what, what changes, uh, modernizations, new approaches might you look to bring to the court of Snyder and Union Counties? Sure, that's a great question. So I think communication is a key component to uh, successful um, judicial administration. And what I mean by that is uh, working hand in hand between the judge, as I am and that I have done, with both sets of commissioners really provides a tax savings to the people of Union and Snyder County. And an example of that would be, I just completed a project where I worked with uh, the commissioners and the court administrator, the Administrative Office of Pennsylvania Courts, uh, commonly uh, acronymed AOPC, and, um, and, and actually the Snyder County Historical Society, who's the landlord of the building, to basically tap into some statewide grants and that grant was to help improve the security of my court. And it was a costly venture that was completely uh, absorbed by grants. So though that statewide grant money, instead of being allocated to maybe Pittsburgh or Philadelphia, we were able to enjoy that money right here in central Pennsylvania in the 17th Judicial District. So I think the um, good communication and good relationships that I currently have with both sets of commissioners really help to create a tax savings for the people of Snyder and Union County. And I'd like to improve upon that and continue that good relationship. That's, um, that's a, interesting and I'm sure very uh, impactful to the listeners of this, uh, of this 
uh, recording because you know the chamber of 700 members, but 90% of them are small businesses, and they've all had to tighten their belt and do things differently and uh, modernize. And to hear that you were able yes. to get that grant, congratulations Thank on you. that. Well, uh, Lori, we're about to wrap up, and this is really going very, very well. Uh, and I'm going to ask you the sort of the zinger question <laughs> that uh, that uh, you can't get through any candidates uh, forum without being asked is, what makes you the best candidate to be the next judge? Well, certainly my extensive judicial experience, uh, my many years of successful practice in law, which encompasses civil and criminal cases, which you would expect a common pleas judge to have uh, been involved in and understand, coupled with my reputation as a fair and impartial judge. All of those uniquely qualify me for this important role as uh, judge of the Court of Common Pleas. And I will also couple that with, uh, as I had mentioned before briefly, uh, Judge Hudock four years ago asked me to be a judicial team member on treatment court. And what that is is basically when he's unavailable, uh, I sit on the bench in the Court of Common Pleas in both Union and Snyder County, and I preside over those treatment court cases. So I'm already doing part of the job that uh, your viewers can elect me to continue on a permanent basis. And I have found that role to be so rewarding, um, so I'm able to do that on a weekly basis. Now it's when Judge Hudock's not available, but certainly he's the judge retiring. Um, so the next judge will be handling treatment court. And I, and I have that experience. Um, I'm the only candidate who in the past four years have, has been able to attend and be part of um, the graduations and all of those things. So I have um, nine years. I'm in my 10th year as a magisterial district judge. I have the experience on my bench um, in that role. I also have the experience on the bench in the Court of Common Pleas. In fact, the day after the election, I'm scheduled to be sitting on the bench in the Court of Common Pleas in Union County handling the treatment court cases. And I have a reputation for being a fair judge, an impartial judge, um, and, and a judge with the experience and knowledge to be able to do the job well. And so I'm asking for all of your viewers' votes on November 2nd for Judge of Court of Common Pleas in the 17th Judicial District. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Lori. This has been fantastic. If, if I may, I, I didn't ask for permission uh, for a follow-up, but could you just tell our uh, viewers what is treatment court? What oh. exactly is that? So treatment court is an alternative. It's therapeutic jurisprudence, essentially. And what that means is individuals who are suffering from um, severe mental health disorder or substance use disorder, they can enter into this program. And it's an alternative to incarceration. And they, can, they go through a very intensive program where um, with supervision, self-help meetings, community service, to various organizations, nonprofit and otherwise, in both counties, um, and they and they really uh, we we provide counseling. We work very closely with CMSU, and um, and basically what we do is we help these individuals to live productive um, lives, living in sobriety as opposed to incarceration. And I will tell you, uh, Bob, this is an amazing program. We are nationally renowned for the work we do. Most of your viewers may not know this but we serve as a mentor court um, across the nation. So we have different courts coming in from all over the different states and observing what we do in our court and then taking that information back and implementing it in their own courts. And so we are um, nationally renowned for the work we do in a rural treatment court program. Um, it is an, an amazing program. Uh, we as judges are receiving updated trainings all the time. I was just at the national conference in Washington, D.C. and finished in, uh, in Penn Creek, or excuse me, uh, Penn State for the Pennsylvania um, event as well. So we have a whole bunch of uh, things that we learn as judges and the continuation of trainings to aid us to be able to help uh, these participants and, and I find it to be wonderful. Thank you. That sounds up. Absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, five days in a wake up and it's election day. Not I know. to <laughs> cause any, uh, any uh, raise in blood pressures or anything, but uh, all, all the best. Thank you so very much. And thank you again for having me here today.
Well, we're at the point where we're going to wrap up, um, uh, Brian, and you have uh, you've painted a compelling picture uh, for us here. And let me just ask you the zinger question is, what makes you the best candidate to be the next judge? Uh, simple answer, uh, my experience. Um, as I've indicated, for 22 years, I've been a courtroom attorney. I've been doing the sorts of things that common pleas judges do on a daily basis for that 22-year period. I dare say that there really hasn't been an area of the law that a common pleas judge deals with that I haven't been involved in in one manner or another um, since I started. You know, I go back to the endorsements as well, the state troopers, the gun owners of America, those attorneys um, who really know what's required um, of a common pleas judge. I'm not endorsed by any uh, politicians. Um, I really want to be that candidate uh, for the people, the one who has the support of the individuals who know uh, what common pleas judges do uh, on a daily basis. Um, I mentioned the jury trial experience. Uh, you know, that experience is what uniquely qualifies me uh, to be the next judge. It's very difficult to learn those sorts of things or learn about those sorts of things uh, up on the bench. That's experience that you really need to have uh, or really need to gain by working uh, in the trenches. And I've done that almost primarily in my practice um, for the last 22 years and with my experience uh, at the district attorney's office. Um, you know, 60 to 65 to perhaps even 70% of the caseload for common pleas judges are, are criminal cases. Uh, and I have that experience, uh, having worked at the district attorney's office for 17 of my 22. And, and, and by the way, you know, it's not like I got out of doing criminal work for those you know, additional five years. Um, I, I did do some criminal defense work um, when I took a break from the district attorney's office. Uh, and then the other uh, part of that 60 to 70% caseload is, is family law cases. Uh, and that's been my primary practice area uh, in my private practice. And, and unfortunately there, we're talking about divorce, we're talking about custody, we're talking about both child and spousal support. And, and in addition to those practice areas, again, you know, I, I spend two days, uh, two full court days each and every month representing Union and Snyder County domestic relations in attempting to assist, at least, in the collection of support, uh, be it spousal support, be it child support, uh, for families in both uh, Union and Snyder County. So uh, all of that is what I believe uniquely qualifies me uh, and makes me the best candidate to be uh, the next judge. Um, I would also be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that this is a Union County seat that's opening up. Um, I am the only Union County resident. Uh, Snyder County has, uh, you know, a judicial representative in, in Judge Sholley. Um, you know, Union County residents deserve to have the same. With that, uh, thank you, Brian, uh, for being here this morning, and come back anytime. <laughs> thank you for having you me. Back. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for this Coffee with the Candidates. Please join with us many more times as we seek to engage you, the members of the Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber of Commerce.